uh, last week we talked about uh, Alexei Navalny's uh, murder uh, in uh, in a prison in uh, in Siberia, and uh, of course uh, it it took Trump like three days to to comment on this, but he did. He did. Trump did comment on it, uh, and and uh, his comment is uh, is I think very indicative of everything that is Donald Trump. Uh, here is the comment. This is the only comment Donald Trump has published on the Navalny death, as far as I can tell, and as far as anybody else has seen. Quote, the sudden death of Alexei Navalny has made me more and more aware of what is happening in our country. <laughs> Allow me to laugh out loud, LOL. Um, it, no, it's sad. It's too bad. Putin, you shouldn't kill your opposition leaders. No, no, no. This is, has made me more and more aware of what is happening in our country. It's a slow, steady progression with crooked, radical left politicians, prosecutors, and judges leading us down a path to destruction. Open borders, rigged elections, and grossly unfair courtroom decisions are destroying America. We're a nation in decline, a failing nation, MAGA 2024. In other words, he can't comment. He can't denounce. He can't say, you know, it's wrong of Putin to have killed his opposition. No, I mean, I think it was Trump's lawyers in front of the Supreme Court who argued that, uh, no, in front of the, not the Supreme Court, in front of the uh, Circuit Court, the, the um, Court of Appeals, the, the, the uh, Fifth Circuit Court, uh, it was Trump lawyers that argued that Trump could have his political rival assassinated while being president and couldn't be prosecuted for it. So I guess Trump thinks that assassinating political rivals is okay. Anyway, nothing about the death, nothing condolences, nothing negative, you know, anything, nothing, zero. And I tell you in a minute why. I mean, there are many reasons why, but A, uh, he can only think about himself. He can only turn everything into political statement for himself. He can only use this to denounce others. Um, Donald Trump is the definition of, of, a, of a narcissistic scumbag uh, and uh, his response to Navalny's death is a great example of exactly that. Uh, um, and if I sound like Hillary Clinton, that means Hillary Clinton sounds like me, and maybe she's come around. That's, that's good. Um, but this is truth, absolutely truth. Now, one of the reasons Trump does not want to denounce the murder of Alexander Navalny is because of the rumors the conspiracy theories circulating among Make America Great Again uh, networks. You can see them all over Twitter, all over the network. They might be here right on the chat. If we just wait a minute, we might get some of them ourselves. One of the rumors, maybe the one uh, that has the most legs right now, is that CIA murdered Navalny by the direct order of uh, President Biden, and they did so in a high-security jail above the Arctic Circle in Siberia. And, and indeed, uh, you can expect any day now that the entire KGB hierarchy will be fired for letting this happen. But it's a CIA operative inside the high-security jail in the Arctic Circle in Siberia who actually killed Navalny, and it's all Joe Biden's fault, which is par for the course because everything bad in the world is Joe Biden's fault. Everything good in the world is Donald Trump's fault. Now, this is insane. Now, why would the CIA want to kill him? Why would Joe Biden want to kill Navalny? Ah, here is why. And you can see this in action. You don't have to speculate. You can see it because it happened immediately. As soon as Navalny's murder was announced, Joe Biden did a press conference. And in the press conference, he basically used Navalny's death to urge the House of Representatives to pass an aid bill for Ukraine. So the reason Joe Biden wanted Navalny dead was to use it as a card to kind of urge the House of Representatives to pass the treasonous aid to Ukraine. I mean, these people are nuts. They are crazy. They have no connection and no grasp of reality. 
Putin to them is the savior. Well, he's, he's second in line after Trump. Those two are Jesus Christ reincarnated in terms of being saviors on earth for all of us. Evidence? Andrew, you're so, I don't know, 19th century or, or evidence. Who the hell needs evidence? Evidence is so per se. Evidence is what the left does or claims to do. They claim to have evidence, but the right doesn't even claim evidence. They don't even bother to make it up. They don't need evidence. They just see a pattern. Navalny dies. Joe Biden does press conference. House considering aid to Ukraine. Isn't the causal relationship obvious? It must have been Biden who assassinated Navalny. Otherwise, he wouldn't have had a press conference. <laughs> God. Uh, that is the insanity of uh, the modern right. This is a stupidity. Um, I'll tell you why Navalny uh, killed, uh, why uh, Putin killed Navalny. Because Navalny, in spite of everything, was still a vocal voice. His uh, popularity was not significant uh, in, in terms of polls, of course. But he was the inspirational voice behind the opposition to, um, uh, to Putin. You just look right now in Moscow. You can find these videos all over the place of the number of places where people have gone and laid flowers for Navalny. If he only had 2% of the population, these people wouldn't be doing this. And they're risking, they're risking arrest by doing it. So you can pretend, you can buy Russian propaganda, you can buy into it completely, you can accept it, but the reality is, why is Navalny in jail? Why was Navalny poisoned in 2020? Why has any of this happened to Navalny? Because Navalny, like him or not, is the only charismatic opposition leader who has stood up to Putin and that Putin has feared. Notice that the Navalny murder happens only days after Tucker Carlson says, who cares about Navalny? All, all leaders kill people. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised and I can't prove this, so this is just me speculating, this isn't truth, I wouldn't be surprised if Putin said, huh, I just did the interview with, Trump, with Tucker Carlson. He didn't ask about Navalny. He clearly doesn't care. Americans probably just don't care. And then when he was asked directly about Navalny, um, he was asked directly about Navalny, then uh, Tucker basically says, who cares, all leaders kill people. So. I'll just kill Navalny and get this thorn out of my sight. Who cares? Uh, you know, and, and, uh, and we'll rid of it. The West doesn't seem to care anyway. And put on top of that, they sanctioned me from so many different directions. What more can they do to me? And that's exactly what he did. Now, whether he went through that thought process, I don't know. But there is no doubt that Navalny was murdered at Putin's behest. Uh, this is not, you know, Putin's already tried to murder him in the past. If he was so insignificant, why is he in jail? He wouldn't be in jail if he was insignificant. Only reason, he's not just in jail, but above the Arctic Circle. The second uh, rumor, rumor, not a rumor, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, uh, that is circulating, conspiracy is circulating, is that Navalny is really a neo-Nazi. Navalny is just a Nazi. He's a nationalist. Even, unfortunately, Peter Zane, who really needs to do his research, um, uh, seconded this, uh, seconded this in, one of, in, in, a, in, a, in his video he did when Navalny was dead, after Navalny was died. Um, and uh, the idea is that uh, Navalny is worse than Putin. Now, this is nonsense, which unfortunately has... Um, you know, slight basis. They can, they can pull out a video from over 10 years ago of Navalny attending a far-right uh, uh, protest against Putin where he sounds off and he sounds a little nationalistic. Right? Uh, at the time, Navalny was trying to build a coalition against Putin. And he was flirting 
with the far right in order to build such a coalition. You know, just like just like Scott would do, Navalny was the same way. Go go flirt with anybody who is opposed to the monster in the in in power. Uh, he pretty much quickly figured out that this was a bad idea, and has since written extensively about his views, which are not nationalist. They are not neo-Nazi. He was against the war with Ukraine. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, all these, again, everybody's claiming he's pro-war with Ukraine. All of that is wrong. All of that is wrong. Uh, so Navalny's not good for doing that. Uh, he shouldn't have never flirted with the far right. But he did it. Uh, and uh, he learned his lesson and retracted publicly. It's available. You can find it. The proof is out there. Navalny was basically a good guy. He was a, you know, centrist, if you will. He wasn't a raging capitalist. He wasn't a raging free marketer. But he was pro-freedom, freedom of speech, basic economic freedoms, property rights. And he was opposed to a clearly illegitimate, illegitimate, monstrous regime. Right? Uh, Navalny fought. Uh, he, even without associating himself with the far right, he still fought. You can fight without associating with, with, with the scum of the earth. You really can. Uh, all right, so um, beware of uh, crazy conspiracy theories out there. Uh, beware of people just making stuff up and just running with it. Uh, beware of people who sound authoritati authoritative but are not actually doing the research, are not actually looking at sources, are not actually looking at the evidence. Um, there is a, a wonderful exchange, if you want to get to know Navalny a little bit, if anybody's interested, there's a wonderful exchange between him and a, Ru a Russian dissident from the Soviet era, Natan Sharansky, uh, who lives in Israel, who wrote a book about his experiences in a uh, hard labor camp in Siberia. And uh, Navalny read uh, his book in a similar camp that he was at, and they exchanged some letters. And those letters, the two letters that Navalny wrote to Sharansky, are available, uh, are available online. And uh, you get a bit of a sense of Navalny and Navalny's attitude and, and so on. Uh, and you get a sense of what kind of a person he was. Th this guy is not a bad guy. He's one of the good guys. A good guy in the context of Russia. You know, it's not somebody you would be crazy about if he's in the West. But in the context of Russia, he was fighting the evil regime. And as such, you know, should be celebrated and uh, I think admired.